Okay, so what I'd like to do is just to continue on with uh, stem and leaf diagrams. So just stem and leaf diagrams. So what just also to make sure there's different versions as well or different variations in relation to these stem and leaf diagrams as well. So I just want to look at this particular one. So let's say if we have a range of values. So I'll just write them up here. So 6.6, 4.9, 5.8, 5.7. Six point three, six point five, seven point four, five point one, five point three, six point two, and seven point eight. So these are a range of different values. Now, what you'll notice with these is that they are in decimal point. Okay, there's a decimal place there uh, in all of these. Now, what we can do is, again, we can draw our, our stem and leaf diagram and we can represent uh, these decimal values on the stem and leaf diagram and we can just indicate that uh, by using the key. So, again, it's just really important uh, just that you kind of are aware that there are different uh, versions of stem and leaf diagrams that you could be looking at. And the key, the, the very important thing is to think about the key. So, if we remember, so we have our division like so and if we think about the left hand side is the stem and the right hand side is the leaf and hence the name stem and leaf so what we're going to represent on the stem part will be uh, the numbers the, the whole numbers Okay, within our data set decimal numbers. Okay, so it's going to be the first of these numbers here. And again, like these values here, they could be anything. They could be, for example, they could be like the times that it took contestants to run a race, for example. So it could be six six point six minutes or 6.6 .6, whatever whatever it is okay it doesn't really matter at the moment what the units are but it's just you know it could be it could represent any kind of data set at the moment so the first thing we want to do is we want to figure out like what do we write in here in the stem part so we look for the highest or the lowest value okay within within the first part of the number so if we have a look here so we've six four five seven eight six six seven five, five, six, and seven. So we can see here that the smallest value that we can put in here is going to be four. Okay, so we just put in, we can put in four here. Okay, to represent the fours. And then if we think about like, what is the highest value then within, on the, the, within these numbers? So we've six here, four, which is lower, five, which is lower, seven, which is higher, eight, which is higher, six, six, seven, five. So we can see here that eight is going to be the highest value. So four is the lowest value, which is here. And eight is going to be the highest value. So we can put down our eight down here. And then everything else is going to fill in between that. So we have five. So we put our five here. Uh, do we have, so we have six. So we put our six here. Do we have, so we have six. So we have another six here, do we have seven? We do, there's seven. So we can put in our seven here. So essentially what we've done is we've filled out the stem part. So the next part then is what we want to do is we want to look at the, the decimal part, okay, which is going to be the, the decimal part of the decimal part of each number. So if we think about the fours, how many how many fours have we got? So we have this one here. Do we have any other ones? Okay, so we just have the, the we have the one. So this is going to be 4.9. So again, 
the four here is represented in the leaf, or sorry, in the stem part, and then the, the point nine is going to be represented in the leaf. So we can just write, we can put in a nine here. Now what we can do is we can make our key. So we can say the key then, and the key will be like something like, so it'll be four and then a line and then nine. So this just represents, the, the left hand side represents the stem part and the, the right hand side represents the leaf part and this line in the middle represents this line here. So four, point, so four slash nine is going to be equal to 4.9. So the person that's looking at this knows that the four represents the number in front of the decimal point and the nine represents the number after the decimal point. So that's the first, so, this is, so we've, we've dealt with all the fours. So the next thing then what we want to do is we want to deal with the, the fives. Let's just change color here. So that was, so we had the fours, that's the fours. And now what we want to do is look at the fives. So again, we look at our, we look at our data set and data points. So we see here, so we have, so this number here is, a, there's a five in it. And what other numbers have we got? So this number here is a five. And this number here is a five as well. Now, generally what you want to do is when you're putting in the values, let's say on the leaf part, you want to go from the lowest to the highest. So, so lowest to highest values. So if we look here at the fives, for example, there's three, there are three different values, let's say three different decimal point value, first decimal place values uh, within these three uh, numbers that have five in it. So we start with the lowest first. So we see, so we've one, three and seven. So one is going to be the lowest, three is after that, and then seven is after that. So we can put them in that order here. So, so if we think so 5.1, so this number here will be represented, will be represented as 5.1. So we just put our one here. So that's that one. The next one then is going to be, the next one up is going to be 5.3, which is this one. So we can represent that with a three here. And then the next one up is going to be 5.7, which is this number here. And we can represent that by, with a seven. So that's those three, that's those three values uh, for the fives represented. So if we move on then and we look at, the sixes, so how many numbers have we got with six? So we have this one, uh, we have this one here, we have this one, and we have this one. So we have one, two, three, four. And again, we wanna rank them in order. So if we look at, so the lowest, this looks like the lowest one here. This one looks like the next, then this one, and then this one. Okay, so then we just represent them on, on the diagram. So 6.2, so this is the six, the six part is this part here. So that's represented by this part here, the leaf. And then the point two part, so the two then, we just write two here. If we look for the three, so the next one is three, we put three here. So that's those two, that one and that one. 6.2, 6.3, 6.4. Five, it's going to be this one here. So it's five here. That's that one. And we want to look for the next one is 6.6, .6, which is this one here, 6.6. .6. Okay, so that's all of those, that's all of those represented there. So that's the all of the sixes represented. And we can see they're going in order from lowest to highest. So we have lowest to highest. So then the next number then is seven. Let's change our color. So seven then, so we have, here, here's a seven here, here's another seven, and here's another seven. So we have three seven values. So again, we start from lowest to highest. So it looks like this one is the lowest, followed by this one, followed by this one. So we just represent them again. So this is gonna be 7.4, so it's seven and then four here. That's that guy. Then we have 7.6. So again, the seven, 
So this is the seven here is represented by this, and the six here is represented by this six that we put here in the leaf. So again, that's that one represented on the diagram. And then we look at 7.8. So we, we just put in eight here. So 7.8. Okay, and again, those three then are represented. And then if we look for the values that have eight in it, and we just use this purple here. So 8.2, so we can see we only have the one. Okay, so we, the eight is represented by, is represented here in the stem, and the two is represented here in the leaf, and we just put in a two here. So we've put in a two here. So essentially then, so this here is your, this is your stem and leaf diagram, and it represents this data set here. Okay, and it's just represented easily here. So, so some things that we can think about when we look at this. So how many numbers do we have that have that start with four? We can see that we have one. So we just look at this, the frequency of that, it shows up once. How many numbers do we have that start with the number six? We can see that we have one, two, three, we have four. We have four of them there, okay? It shows up with a frequency of four. Uh, so just looking at this, it's kind of like a, um, a histogram in that way. You can like just when you just eyeball it, you can see here that within this data set, uh, the majority, the highest frequency numbers that show up are numbers that start with six. And um, the least frequency numbers that show up are the numbers, are numbers that start with four and numbers that start with eight. Now, what we can also do with this, so we can do things like, let's say if we wanted to start to work out like some of our statistical tools that we were using, already. So let's just have a look at this. Uh, so, just bring up now. so imagine if we wanted to then, so take this data set and we want to look for things like, for example, the median. So the median, uh, if we wanted to look for, so the lower quartile, uh, if we wanted to look for the upper quartile, and then let's say if we wanted to, we wanted to find the interquartal range. Now, so what we can do is we can kind of start to look at this and start to try and figure out, um, start to look for these values, let's say, using using our stem and leaf diagram. So if we think about the median, so the median is really the value that's halfway within within the uh, within the data set. So the, the median is going to be, if we remember, it's going to be one over two times n plus one and n remember is the number of numbers that we have so if we think about how many numbers have we got so we can see here if we take if we just look at our our, our stem and leaf diagram we can just count them so we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so we can see here just by counting these numbers here that we have twelve so n then our numbers n is going to be equal to 12. So what we can do is we can work this one out then. So it's going to be, the median is going to be a half of uh, 12 plus one. Okay, so it's equal to a half, a half of 13. Okay, which is equal to 12.5. So what we're saying is that remember that this here what this means is it's the 12th. So the median is going to lie between the 12th and the, the 13th position, okay? Or the 12th and the 13th number. So then what we want to do is we want to think like where where is that going to lie? Let's say if we look at our, if we look at our stem and leaf diagram. So the next thing then what we want to do is like we want to try and figure out where is the 12th and 13th position let's say on our diagram here so what we can do is we can we can number them so this here is going to be this is going to be the first 
So this here is going to be the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh. and 13th okay so sorry so this should be 12 divided by so let me just rub this out because this isn't nice uh, so bear with me one second now so we've, we've numbered the positions so this is actually going to be so it's going to be a half of 13 which is going to be 6.5 so 6.5 as opposed to 12.5. So 6.5, so it's going to be between the sixth and the seventh position. Okay, so remember that this represents the position. So again, if we think about where does that lie on our diagram here? So this is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, uh, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth position. Okay, so we'll write this here. So Eight, nine, so this is ten. So this is ten, and this is the eleven position. So this is going to be the twelfth position. So what we're saying is that the median then it's going to lie somewhere between the sixth and the seventh position. So so here we have so this is the sixth position, which is three, and the seventh position, which is five. So it's going to lie somewhere between those two. So what we do is so we see that we have two values here. We've three plus five, which is equal to eight. And then we can divide those by two because it's not it's not an even number. This isn't an even number. So we take our two values. Our, so the value in the sixth position is three. The value in the seventh position is five. We add these together, we get eight. And then we divide it by two. So it's equal to four. Okay, so our median then is going to be equal to for the actual value for the median and it's going to lie somewhere between the sixth and seventh position so the sixth and seventh this is the sixth and this is the seventh so it's going to be somewhere between those two so it's going to be it's going to be four it's going to be in the middle so that's how if we were to look at the median that's how we'd figure out what the median is and i'm going to rub some of this out as well just so i can make space so just if you need to go back over just pause the video and you can go back over it Okay, so let's just make a little bit of space. Okay, so I'm just gonna get rid of this. Okay, so that's that's working out what's known as the median. Okay, so the median is roughly like halfway. It's halfway. So that's the median. So if we think that the lower quartile range then, if we remember what our formula is for the lower quartile range. So the lower quartile range is just going to be a quarter. So it's going to be one over four times the number of numbers, which is N, which is 12 plus one. Okay, so that's going to be equal to a quarter of 13 which is equal to what's a quarter of 13 and just on this as well okay so the median is going to be the median is somewhere between three and four so it's actually going to be 6.4 okay so it's going to be four but it's going to be 6.4 so just on that just in case I forget. So the median will actually be 6.4. So 6. six point six point four. So what you would do is you would you would add it so you would it, it will be 6.4. So we've worked out that we worked that out. So if we have a look at this then, so a quarter of 13, so what's that going to be equal to? Okay, so a quarter of 13, so if we take 13, 
Okay, so 13 divided by 4, which is equal to 3.25. So this is going to be equal to 3.25. So it's 3.25. So it's so if we think about this, so this is the third position. So where's the third position? So it's it's here. So it's somewhere, so it's going to be somewhere between the third and the fourth position. So it's going to be more towards the the lower end of the third and fourth position. So again, what we can do is we can take our numbers, so 4 and 7, or sorry, 3 and 7, so it's going to be 3 plus 7, which is equal to 10. And what we can do then, so what we, we can take these values here, and really like the way that you would write it, let's just rewrite this one here as well, like using So what we would say then is that, so it's going to be, the number is going to be between, so it's 5, so 5.3 plus um, 5.7 divided by 2. So if we add those two together, what's that going to be equal to? So 5.3 plus 5.7 is equal to 11 divided by 2, which is equal to 5.5. So it's going to be somewhere between, between these two values here. So it's going to be equal to 5.5. How do we say it was? 5.5. .5. Okay, so the lower quartile range is going to be 5.5. .5. Okay, so that's that one. So then the upper quartile range then is going to be, it's just going to be the same formula except it's going to be three quarters so it's going to be so three over four of 13 uh, which is going to be equal to So 13 divided by 4, multiplied by 3, which is 9.75. So it's somewhere between the 9th, so it's equal to 9.75. So it's somewhere between the 9th and the 9th and the 10th position. So the 9th position is 7.4 and the 10th position is 7.6. We add those up, divide by 2, so 7.4 plus 7.6, which is equal to 15, divided by 2, which is equal to 7.5. So 7.5, so again, it's somewhere in between these two, in between these two values here. So the upper quartile, the upper quartile range is going to be 7.5. Okay, so that's that one. And then the interquartile range. So the interquartile range is just going to be the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. So in this case, it's going to be uh, 7.5 minus 5.5, which is just going to be equal to two okay so the interquartal range is two so again we go through more examples of these as well but it's just 
move it's kind of just adding a little bit more on to these stem and leaf diagrams and looking at some of these statistical tables that we've already looked at okay so hopefully that you found that useful and um thank you for listening